Hi, I'm Ven, and welcome to my book corner. Today we're looking at the horror novella The Ballad of Black Tom, written by Victor Laval. This is a revisit of the Lovecraftian short story The Horror at Red Hook, and is told from the viewpoint of Black Tom, also known as Tommy Tester. As always, we shall be looking at the story, the characters, the world building and the writing style and at the end I shall give my own thoughts on this story. So, without any delay, let's just jump straight in. So this book is a reframing of the horror at Red Hook, but more importantly this is actually a social commentary, largely on the many problematic themes that you find in much of Lovecraft's work, specifically in this case, the inherent racism that is present in many of his books. The basis of the story is that there's an eccentric white millionaire who is looking to bring about the return of the old gods, specifically in this case, I believe to be Cthulhu. So the story initially follows Black Tom, also known as Tommy Tester, who is a 20 year old of African descent who has been acting as a hustler and a con man and has been smuggling items of occult interest to various people throughout Queens. Being a black man in a largely white neighborhood there was a great deal of racism towards him however one day whilst traveling through the area on business he decides to start playing his guitar in the area following the logic that whilst he is nothing more than a passable musician It'll be type of music that the people in this area will not be used to, unlike the people back in his native neighbourhoods in Harlem. This gets him the attention of Robert Soydon, who decides to employ him to act as a musician at one of his parties. Prior to this party, Black Tom attends the mansion and discovers the actual plot of fetching back the Great Old Ones to help fetch a little bit more fairness to humanity, even if that fairness is underneath a flaming boot. On his return home, having decided to take the money and run, he finds out that his father has been shot multiple times by the police in an apparent act of self-defence on their part. Due to the grief, this drives him back to the eccentric millionaire, and he resigns himself to helping fetch about the return of the Great Old Ones, almost as an act of vengeance, if nothing else. The second half of the story follows Detective Malone, another descendant of an immigrant, although this time Irish, and somebody who has some mild occult leanings of their own. Whilst not inherently racist in many ways, does carry some of the racist tones that you see throughout the book and is quite dismissive towards some of the other cultures, but is by far and away not the worst person in this book. As a result of this and his colleagues, he begins to sense that there's something more going on, and he manages to mobilise the entire police force to hit a raid on the area where all these things are going on. The story ends with the apparent disappearance of Tom, the death of Robert Soydon, and the not so much incarceration, but the please go and retire gently over there of Detective Malone. This is a short book coming in at about 150 pages, and it is a recycled, if reimagined story, but I felt the need to read this quite quickly. It's actually quite a gripping story in itself. I actually wish it was a little bit longer, but it is an extension of what was an original short story. But this was really good start to this, a really strong story present throughout. To world building and this is where this book truly excels obviously this as I've already mentioned is a commentary on Lovecraft's work and the deeply inherent racism is visible right from the start and actually it makes quite an uncomfortable read this was actually to the point where I actually had second thoughts about whether or not I should actually review this um, the way the police force are so dismissive of the what well, we, we shall call minorities in this case the way the Tommy feels unsafe in Queens which is a predominantly white neighborhood the attitudes of the people around them the difference in terms of wealth and rights that people have it's 
really, really well shown here, and it's actually heartbreaking to think that this is how people actually thought, and still do in some places, unfortunately. Really, really good world building. The little dips into the Cthulhu mythos, which is something I'm not overly familiar with personally, is also well done. And you do get this sense of impending dread and doom whenever you're sort of skirting into those areas. There's also enough left dangling for you to go, well, what actually was that? For example, the old woman to which Tom was initially making his delivery of a book to was far more than just an old woman, but it's never made completely clear what they were. Really good world building. Definitely the best world building in a book that I've read this year. Top marks here. Characterization here overall is decent, especially considering the fact that this is a 150 page book. Tom gets the largest amount of characterization as you would expect, being the title character in many regards. He has clear goals, clear motivations, and you get a sense of dread when he goes into certain areas like the Queens, how at home he feels in Harlem, how in tune he feels with his music, even though personally he's not actually particularly good at playing. And when his motivation shifts after the death of his dad, you feel that grief and that pain. Unfortunately, the other characters are not as well fleshed out. Again, this is a drawback of it being a novella that's only 150 pages long. But none of them feel out of place. They do all have clear personalities and clear drivers. They're just not as well fleshed out. So ideally, I would have liked a longer book. But on saying that, this is more about the themes this book is tackled than the characters and the fact that Tom is so well fleshed out compared to the rest makes complete sense from that regard. This book has a number of things going for it in terms of writing style. The pace is really well done which is impressive when you consider that this is a reimagining of a short story a third of its size. When reimagining something like that, it's not unusual for the pacing to suffer some major issues with sag in some places, but this never feels like that. This is very much a pick this book up and read it in one sitting sort of book, which is quite easy to do. On top of that, the character work overall is solid, if unspectacular at times. However, when it zooms in, as it does with Tom, you have a truly dynamic character that is exceptionally well written and becomes a proper focus for the book. Just like that in terms of the themes as well, the laser focus and the way that they are handled are really, really well, if uncomfortable at times, as they should be with what these themes are. The actual physical world building leaves a little bit to be desired, but that is to be expected in a book of this length. Overall, this is one of the better written books that I've read this year. So for me, this is a must-read novella. The characterization is good. Tom in particular is an exceptional highlight of character writing, especially in the short amount of time that he is on page. However, that being said, this may not be a book for everyone. The way this focuses in on the theme of racism in Lovecraft's work can be really distressing at times and is a difficult read as it should be and it's actually soul destroying to think that this is how people thought and in some places and cases still do think like this however if you are a fan of the Cthulhu mythos and Lovecraft's work in general then this is a book that I think you would enjoy it hits a lot of the themes whilst also critiquing his work for me this is an easy four star book but that has been my opinion on The Ballad of Black Tom. Have you read this book? How did you find it? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like what I do, if you would like and subscribe, that will really help me out. But that's it from me. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.